Welcome back. This is my 2023 KTM 450 XCF. Brand new. We're going to make it street legal. I got a box full of parts here. This isn't a sponsored video. All this stuff I paid for myself. I've actually done one of these street legal kits on my wife's XR100 dirt bike. It is actually probably one of the cleanest builds I've ever seen. I'll have a link up above if you want to check it out. It's pretty incredible. And that's a street legal XR100. It'll do 50 miles an hour on the street. This Tusk kit has the rear fender. It's got front blinkers. You can also get these with integrated handguard blinkers. That's what I did on my wife's bike. These are a little unique on how these handguards are installed on this bike here. So I want to keep these handguards. So we're probably going to end up fabricating up some type of mount. And then we're going to take off the seat, the tank, because we've got to run a harness down through. And we're going to put on a rear fender kit. That's going to look pretty sick. There. How we do that? I'll just loosely put this back together until we can fit our control on there. Oh, we've got some uh, little felts to make up any distance that we need to around the handlebar. And here are the instructions on how to wire everything up. I love how this just kind of like has the loom on it and stuff. It just, everything's plugged together. It just looks factory, you know. This kit. It's fairly expensive. It's a lot more. It's like over $200 if you get the one that has the integrated turn signals in it, but they look really nice. So if your bike didn't come with hand guards on it, I'd recommend getting the integrated uh, turn signals just because it's clean and uh, it just looks just looks super nice. But like I said, this one has the factory hand guards on it, so we're going to keep it uh, factory in that aspect. We'll install the on-off switch on the right side, but I'm not going to move the controls to do it. I'm just going to put it just like that. That'll work just fine. Now we got everything run just like it would be from the factory, running on the same way as all the other lines are going, so it looks super clean. I took the front mask off, our number plate, and you can see this is our new wire. Just running it down into the clips over here. Same thing over here. Here's our new wire here, and our factory wire is right underneath it. And just running down through this clip and coming out here. Once we're done, we'll make this all up nice and neat right behind the number plate because it'll be just like, you know, it'll look factory. All right, next thing we got to do is we got to get off the seat. We got to get off the tank because we got to get our wires for our taillights and blinkers and our brake switch. We got one brake switch going in down here onto this foot brake. And uh, I don't think it comes with one for the handbrake up here, but we'll, uh, we'll end up picking one up. Because we want the brake light to turn on when we touch the brake here and when we touch it down there. I just opened up the rear fender, and that comes with instructions on how to hook that up too, so that's pretty nice. But I wanted to kind of show you this up close. And this is LED, and I'm going to end up mounting their directionals. They're real flush mount uh, directionals. I'm going to end up mounting them here. And then you run the wire up through, so this sandwiches it to your regular fender. So that's going to go something like that. That's just going to look so clean. And it's actually going to kind of look factory because that's how the factory fender from the side looks. But you can see how far up this goes. But one of the considerations that I'm looking at is you see this back fender right here? This is the seam from where this back fender bolts on. So it's like kind of like this piece right here, right? So we got to drill a hole up through to get it into the battery box. So 
the back of the seat goes right here so I'm thinking probably right about in this area is where we'll have the hole where we can get the turn signals and the brake light up into the bike and because this leading edge right here extends past that part of the fender the hole will be completely concealed so when you're riding through water and stuff like that you know splashing nothing's going to get up under here so that'll be nice it'll all be protected none of the wires will be exposed this little bit will be but you know that's no different than any other bike but i think that is going to look incredible so that's the next thing we're going to do is drill a hole to get these wires through and then we've got a horn to mount and this is what that looks like so i think we'll take this and mount that up under like that. The one issue with these bikes is that they don't have a high output stator because they were never designed to be on the street. So that's why one of the important things of me having uh, LED lights that don't draw a lot and I'm not going to get a high powered headlight. I'm going to look for something that draws around probably 10 watts at the most. That way we don't have to worry about not having enough power to run everything that we need to run. We kind of take a look at the seat, how the seat's made. So you can see this little tab or this little lip right here slides into that. So we know we can't come up into here because that's going to interfere with getting the seat off. And now I just slid the seat on so we can get an idea. There is some space up under there. So there's looks to be plenty of room to get the wire between the top of the fender and under the seat. Uh, but just so that I know, not have our wire showing anywhere, I'll take a pencil and I'll just kind of like trace around this so I have a good, a good line. Push my seat all the way back. Could have actually done this before we, before we took the tank off and whatnot. All right, we'll slide the seat ahead. Here's our pencil mark. So we just need to be inside that pencil line. So I still feel pretty good. We'll go right through this area right here with our hole and we can feed that wire, those wires right up through that. The best way to drill through that fender is going to be use a step drill and I'm just kind of sizing it up and if you know you weren't sure you could do something like this. So let's say you just you don't even really need the measurement. You just putting these calipers on there over the connector and seeing if whatever you have is going to work. So we know that'll work. Let's say we went and grabbed this one. This one would work too. So I think we'll just go right for, for this one right here. We'll drill it with that. See how that does. I think we might have to go one more step to get through it. Yep, one more. There, check that out. Fits through there nicely, just like that. You're probably wondering, how am I going to mount this? Well, what I'm going to do is hold this and clamp this where it needs to be. Then I'm going to use some nice, fancy stainless steel screws with nylon locking nuts on the bottom so they can't vibrate loose and then to top the whole thing off to cover up my screws I'm going to put a small fender bag KTM fender bag on the back and that'll cover up all my screws and then that'll give me a place to carry my registration and uh, my insurance papers and you know a small padlock to uh, lock the bike up uh, when I can, you know, run something maybe through the tire and the swing arm, just, you know, to help detour people. If they want it bad enough, they're going to find a way to get it. So that'll go up through like that. But before we mount the fender up on the bike, let's get the blinkers mounted to the fender. Comes with some hardware. Like I said, this is all part of the kit. Everything that I'm using right now is part of this kit and anything that I purchase additionally I will have a full list of everything that I used uh, to do this so this is how the blinkers are gonna go on that is gonna look super super trick check that out guys 
Now this next part is pretty easy because what we're going to do is we're going to use this little rubber gasket as our template to make our marks where that hole goes, where that one goes, and where our wire actually goes through. So what I'll do is take my spring-loaded punch and put a little hole, make a mark everywhere where we got to put a hole. Like that. One punch mark there, one there, and the other one is right there. So we'll just drill these out and then do the same thing to the other side. This drill bit kit that I just picked up is awesome for this. Check this out, guys. So it has like a little starter drill point on the end. It works great if you're trying to find the center of a point. See, we'll start with a little hole first, I guess. That one's too big. I'll try this one. Yep, that one looks good right there. Now we'll size up, I guess, the wire. So that looks pretty good for that. Oh, another good thing too. See the drill bits? They have like a little shank on them. So sometimes when your drill bits will spin inside your drill, this prevents that. Really, this is super easy. The, probably the most difficult part of this is just making sure that when you put the other blinker on that you do it so that it looks exactly the same, you know, on the other side. Now that blinker all secured on that side, what I did on the last one I built, is you can see how I took the wire and ran it kind of like down like this, and I'll put a uh, cable tie around this little stud right here, that'll just kind of keep this flush over here and from like kind of pulling out, just to help secure it a little bit. You know, you don't want mud and stuff clumping up under there and dragging the wires down and wreaking havoc with it. I have the blinker on the other side mounted and I put a little bit of black Gorilla Tape down the center. That'll just help keep the wires organized to the middle so that when we're drilling the fender we don't have to worry about one of the wires straight off and we end up putting a drill bit through it. Now we got to put it on the bike. So I've kind of test fit everything and that's kind of going to be how it goes, but as you can see, you see the hole right where the wires are? You can see the light coming up through it right like there. Well, that's because it's hitting the sides right over here of the under fender, or the actual fender itself. So I got to trim on the corners back a little bit to allow this fender to sit in a little bit further so that that hole where the wires go through isn't exposed. And that'll allow this fender to sit in a little bit further because I want it to be kind of like that. I think taking off probably that little bit on each side is going to do it. So we'll just do that at the portable bandsaw. I ended up taking off my fender just so I could get a really good measurement of how I needed to cut that and where it needed to be. And this is the shape, the final shape that it settled on. This little tab coming out forward to cover up this area right here. So that's how it fits just like that. That is going to work perfect. Now I got a nice flat surface where I can evenly drill everything down good. And like I said, I have a uh, tail bag that's going on this. So that's going to hide you know, a good portion of the screws anyways. We'll just feed all our wires down through here. The idea is what I'm trying for guys and those that watch this channel and my other channel know that I'm kind of particular when it comes to how things look and that I want things done the, the right way and at least the best way that I can at the time and you know it's just like putting putting a little bit of tape on here it just keeps everything together you know so even when I was cutting so I didn't end up making a mistake and cutting into the wires and have to go back and patch that up it just sometimes a little bit of extra work in the beginning saves you from having to do more work in the end see that you see how the holes all concealed now but yet the wires come out through there like that that'll be great the next trick is we gotta make sure that this isn't put on crooked because there's nothing worse than looking at something that you know if this was on there and then it was all cockeyed like that that would be <laughs> that would drive me crazy might not some but it would definitely 
drive me bonkers. Alright, one last attempt before I send it home. drilled into my shirt underneath. So this is the hardware that I'm going to use. It's a stainless steel button cap screw. Now the nylon will just keep things so that they don't vibrate around. Yeah, That's going to look pretty good. It's going to look pretty finished. You see how that's just that little fastener there and the bag is going to cover up most of that. I want my screws to be in the same place so what I'm going to do is just use this caliper and just kind of like scribe a mark into the plastic. It doesn't have to be super perfect, but I just want the heads of the screws somewhat in the same orientation so that if the tail bag wasn't on it, you can see how these look nice and even, that it would all look even on the outside. And here it is all installed. I went and got some nylon locking nuts. It's all stainless steel, and I put some flat washes stainless on the back here just you know pushing down or hitting on this or bumping it just so it doesn't pull through a lot less stress here but you can see how this now is all covered up where the wires go through and then it just passes up through here so that'll look really nice nice and even along the back same reveal on the light. It's kind of protected. I think that'll look good. And then uh, the license plate goes right here because it has a light underneath. It looks almost like factory because if you look at the factory KTMs, they actually have this rib, this black rib that runs down the side. So it actually kind of looks factory. See, this is how it looks from the top. It looks really clean, looks professional. This is where I buy all my hardware right there. I'm not sponsored by them, but you can pick up all this specialty hardware for cheap from this company. I got the fender all mounted back up. That looks nice and clean, nice and straight from the back. So now I think the next thing we're gonna do is get this horn mounted up. And I don't know if I gotta mount it this way or this way. I kinda like to mount it this way. All right, I changed the location of the horn. I put it right here. There's actually a hole right there factory in the frame. Then I took a nylon lock nut and put it on, just stuck it on this right here. And then just, because I got fat fingers, then I just fished it up in behind the frame and just turned it slowly here and in it is and that's nice and solid right now. So that'll be good. That'll cover it by the tank. It's not in the way of the radiator. I think that that's just going to work really well. And the bolt that I used is an OEM bolt, and it's about an inch long. And there's the back of that nut, if you can see it right there. And it's nowhere near that coolant line. Even if I move it all the way to its extreme, it can't hit it. That seems like a real good place to put it. So with the horn out of the way, and the taillight mounted, and the controls mounted, now we're going to mount the brake switch. That's this right here. This is vehicle specific. When you order the kit, you can uh, specify which bike you have. So hopefully this fits. This is for the rear brake. And we're gonna need to pick one up for the front brake because it doesn't have one with the kit. So we loosen up this banjo bolt, take it out, discard it, and we replace it with this. And it also comes with new crush washers that are gonna go under and over it. And after we open this fitting, we're going to lose some fluid out of this, so we're going to have to bleed the brakes. And hopefully this is the right fitting. You can see it's got a washer up underneath the bolt head and down here at the master cylinder. So that's basically it for hard parts other than putting the mirror back on. We have a flasher for the LEDs 
And what I did on the other build that I did is I just mounted this up behind the number plate up on the front of the bike. So that's what we'll do for this too. Just that's kind of where all the wires go anyway, so we might as well run it right to there. So now we can put the harness in. We can get all of this wired all the way up to the headlight mask. And then once we have everything up to there, then we can worry about how we're going to do our blinkers up front. I could have mounted the relay up in the front. This is all the factory wiring right here. And I could have put it up in here. But I didn't know how far it's going to protrude out into the, you know, the headlight mask. So what I did was I went a step further and I mounted it right in behind right there. You can see those zip ties right through it right there. So that'll keep it up out of the way and it's away from the steering neck. So we don't have to worry about it bumping into anything when we're riding and it's protected. And then that just comes down to that connector. So now I've got the harness run along the bike and now we just gonna start connecting up stuff and plugging it in and making it look good. So here's the back side of the harness and I'm gonna run it right along the frame in here with this original harness that's right here. And you can see I've got it run up along the same path here and it comes up in, this will be all nice and neat. It goes up underneath this little plastic guard. So it's all run together and then it comes out right here. So when this is all done, this will actually look all factory. You, you won't even know that this has a kit on it. There'll be probably a small coil up under the seat, but you know, running it along the factory wiring is going to prevent us from having like any chafe marks or anything like that. We know that that's the best place to run it. So I'm going to start getting some of this stuff made up. One thing that I've got to change a little bit, uh, and I'm going to open up the harness to do it, is this wire right here this red and orange is actually the horn wire so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open this harness up back to probably this area here or so so i can get it over to my horn so i'm going to have it come up and then jump right back into the harness so it'll come through here and then i'll have to retape that harness i'll show you what i'm going to do here in a minute and it comes with a really nice wiring diagram everything's all color coded tells you what goes to what so this is that wire right there the green and red i'm going to actually cut this harness back a little bit so i so it can terminate and come out here closer where the horn is so this is the power wire this is what feeds the harness and so obviously I've got a red positive and a black negative and you can see I just ran the wire up through the boot so that kind of has like a factory look to it and the negative just went over here so there's no chafing I'm just being real careful to make sure that you know nothing is rubbing on other things because we certainly don't want electrical problems when you're out on a trail ride I'll show you what I've done now the seat the seat actually goes into this little notch here so I've made sure to like spread my wires down like this and then there's actually a little pad on the seat that sits right here and it hits here then it has little fingers that lock in here so I've actually taken my harness and then pulled it into the middle so it clears these pads to give it a nice finished look and then I've just stuck it into these factory clips which I assume are probably for the factory taillights and now I've just kind of like run everything together. Now I'm working on hooking up the blinkers. So you can see there's a connector here. This is the ground for the actual blinkers in the back. So you'd have left and right. What I did is I just combined them and put them under one terminal and twisted the wires together for the grounds. And I'm going to solder this because I really like soldered connections. And then we'll just have to figure out which one is left and right and that'll go to these respectively and then plug this which powers the harness into this and the whole back of the bike will be done and you can see how clear clean this is so I'm starting it from the back so I can work the harness to the front make it nice all along the frame rails and everything I can get the seat and the tank all back together and then all my work then will be up at the front of the bike in behind the headlight mask and we can just make everything look real tidy back there. Honestly guys running your wires and making sure that everything is run appropriately and it looks nice and neat and tidy 
that's really what takes the most time and but that's what really sets off a good looking job versus a job that's just kind of so-so. Now I got a propane torch that I use and I put a glove down just to keep any uh, spatter from getting onto the bike because it will drop down here. Now the goal is to heat up this and not necessarily the solder. So you want this to pull the solder into it. There we go, just like that. Yeah, that's a nice solid connection right there. And we'll just slide down our little boot, make it look finished, help protect it, and there it is. And then that'll just plug into that like this. And now that leaves me a spare negative terminal for the uh, for anything else that I want to hook up. So now we got to hook up the left and the right blinkers. So we'll put an end on it, and then we'll figure out eventually which ones we got to plug this into. Some of these areas are really hard to see where I'm running the wires, so this is what I've done here. And this will all be concealed, you won't see any of it. So I'm running it to the outside of the subframe, okay, and that's going to tuck right there. Then I'm going to run it on the back side of this support, okay, so that'll get tied along that. Then I'm tying it along this line right up here, I don't know what that is. And it comes through right there and runs right back into the harness. So that's the route I'm doing to keep it away from the exhaust. And this wire should be cool as a cucumber all the time. You can see how that's run out of the way. There's no way that that's going to get hot from the exhaust at all. So that's a real nice way to run it out of the way, nice and clean. Especially once this goes back on there, all of that will be hidden. You won't see any of it. So now the moment of truth. I've got everything wired up. I just got the horn all plugged in. I'll show you what I did there. The horn wires were actually up towards the front of the mask. So what I did is I just took the harness, split it open a little bit, and then shortened the wires and had them come out right here. So the horn connections are actually right here and I soldered everything together and heat shrunk them so that way there's never going to be any issues. So that removed two wires out of this harness from up there. It just made them shorter so it's a little more custom fit. So like I said, the thing is this is a, you know, a generic harness for many different bikes. So they're going to naturally make it a little bit longer than necessary. So I wanted to shorten it up just to give it, you know, a neater appearance. So from here back, everything is done and buttoned up. This is just the charging cord for the, for the battery when it's stored all winter. So we should be able to put on the tank and the seat, get all that back together, but first we gotta try everything. So I plugged in this, this is our battery, you know, coming off to the battery, powering up our harness, and then to turn on the harness. Oh, it works. Well, so far so good. We got a tail light working. I'll flick the switch on the handlebar, you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, let's see if we have a brake. Yep, we do. Good. Now we should have a right turn signal. Yep, and a left turn signal. Yep. And let's see if we got a horn. Ha! All right, so everything works. Sweet, I just like how clean this horn is. Everything just looks nice and neat, you don't see anything. Should be pretty concealed. So we'll turn this off and we will get this part of the bike all buttoned back up to make sure we don't have any fitment issues. I don't think we do. I think our wires are all good the way we've run everything, but uh, I just wanna put everything together right now because I think it's where it needs to be, but I just wanna make sure we don't have any problems. We'll get the tank back on it because like I said, everything we need to do now is at the front of the bike. Check that out. Look at the fit on that horn. It doesn't get really much better than that. I mean, it looks like it was made to go there. So it's not obstructed, so it should be good and loud. And it's really protected because it's up in there. This is what I'm using for a headlight. It's the same headlight that I used on my wife's XR100. I just love how this light works. It 
doesn't have a high beam, so you're only going to have one bright setting, but it's bright enough, and just make sure that the state that you live in, that you don't have to have a high beam light. In ours, we don't. It just has to be adequate enough to project out a certain number of feet without being too high off the road so that it blinds oncoming drivers. So I know that this light is adequate for our state, so I want to show you how I'm going to mount this. So I'm going to mount this on this front mask just like this. Now the reason I have this piece of tape here is because I want to make sure that this is straight and not crooked on this headlight mask and I want to show you how I did it at least for this bike. So this surface here obviously is level and straight and so aren't these. So I just put a piece of blue painters tape across this mask and just put it across the wall and then I just made a mark eight and a half inches up and I did the same thing on this side eight and a half inches up so now I've got this horizontal line that I know is going to be you know straight and even this way so now I can figure out you know where this hole has to be in relation to that and I can use it to mark the holes to mount this light. Yeah, it's got the bracket all built the mount all made and I think I just got to paint it black I don't think I really like that uh, silver color then you can see how the connector just comes through the back. So if you got to take off the number plate or you got to get to, you know, the connections, you just take off this one bolt here. Then just unplug the connect two connections right there and this whole thing comes off. If you guys are wondering what you can use for a DOT street legal tire on this bike, here you go. That is the number. So that's the rear. And that is the front. They're DOT legal. And they're considered a 90-10 tire, meaning 90% uh, in the dirt, 10% on the highway. And that's what you're looking for, that DOT number. And you can see that this tire was made 0824, so that's the eighth week of 24. The wheel is all balanced now. I got quite a bit of wheel weight on here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll add up these wheel weights and put the type of weight that actually goes on your spokes. I think it's going to hold up a little bit better as far as like mud getting on here and trying to rip these off. But as of right now, it's super balanced. And our new sprocket just came in because I'm going to re gear this so I get a little bit more top end out of it. So it's not screaming as it's going down the uh, road so much. And uh, we'll get this sprocket swapped over. Got my wheel set up on a couple blocks that. I put cardboard around it and I do that to protect stuff that I actually care about uh, like setting a motorcycle frame on it so it doesn't scratch or whatever so this will protect the rim and it'll keep the disc brake up off the top of the table. Now we're gonna remove the sprocket and we're gonna replace it with this one as you can see this is a KTM factory sprocket. I think this original sprocket is 52 tooth and I'm replacing it with this one for 48 tooth. And this is the number that I'm using if you're interested. Check out the difference on this sprocket guys. So here's the stock one. Here's the one we're putting on. Quite a bit smaller. That should make it a little bit nicer when I'm just taking it down the road and it shouldn't really overall affect too much of it just going through the woods and doing some light trail riding. They say you should put new bolts in hardware when you replace a sprocket. Uh, if this was, you know, not my bike and I was doing it for someone else, I would be doing that. But Whereas this is my bike, I'm going to just be reusing the fasteners. Put some blue Loctite on it, keep everything nice and secure. I'm also going to have to shorten the chain. I could have replaced the front sprocket and achieved the same results by going up one tooth on the front but I don't know if I have the clearance there to do it it looks like it's really close to the case so instead I'm just gonna 
go this route, snug this back up, and then we'll uh, torque them. I'm not sure what the torque is yet. The torque specs on this, I believe, are 26 foot-pounds, but I couldn't get my torque wrench in there, so I just tightened these up to what it felt like to the tension to, to loosen them, so that it's going to have to be plenty. I feel confident in it, but I believe it's 26 foot-pounds to tighten that. All right, now we can get the rear wheel back on. Probably have shortened the chain, too, I would think. You can see as far as the chain, how much that has changed. It's pretty slack now. And they say whenever you change sprockets, you should change the chain. But like I said, again, this bike has 12 hours on it. It's easy hours, it's not beat. This chain is still brand new. The original stock sprocket on this is aluminum, which kind of surprised me, but I guess, yeah, for lightweight, uh, this, this sprocket here is steel which I think I'm going to be liking that better. Let's get this clip off. Come on. These are special pliers too. There we go. Let's remove these clips. See how the bill on this one side is a little bit taller than the other? It allows you to get on it like this and push. Sorry I didn't get that. I just took this clip and just hit it a couple times with this chisel and that popped right off. That now exposes the O-rings. And we can push out our master link. Just like that. So I think we're gonna have to take probably yeah, one whole link off. I have to grind this off right here. I grind them. You I have the the proper tool for it. Made by Motion Pro right here, but I think it's just as easy to just grind the pin and then you're done. And it's a lot easier on the tool also. Now I can put this all back together. And put the O-rings back on. And put the plate back on. And then we want this plate to be pushed on nice and even. So to facilitate that, I'm gonna use the press tool just so it pushes it all the way on nice and even and doesn't end up bending it. See that push on? There. Now I can loosen the tool. You missed me putting the master link on, but that's okay. Now we just have to check the chain adjustment. Should have plenty in there, I would say. For this bike, it's supposed to have between 68 and 70 millimeters and that's where we're at right there that's 68 so being a metal fabricator I just made this so it's just a piece of aluminum I've etched it KTM 2023 450 and the manual calls for 68 to 70 millimeters of clearance and I just keep this in the shop yeah that's good for that now we'll torque the rear axle and we'll be pretty much done with this project. 59 foot pounds. There we go. Alright guys, here it is. We're going to take it out on its, uh, wouldn't say necessarily maiden voyage. I've already had it out. That's how I knew that the tires needed the wheel weights because I didn't explain it in the video, but there's a rim lock that locks the tire to the wheel. That rim lock is making the wheels off balance. So you can see here's the rim lock right here and all the weight for that rim is on this side. Same with the back tire. If you look right here, these are integrated daytime running lights that I've 
stuck on here with some 3N tape. They weren't a whole lot of money. They're called switchbacks. So when you put on the blinker, these go from white, bright running lights. The white light will turn off and then it will just like sequentially flash orange. So this is what I run for low beams. This is my high beam. So I'm not drawing a whole lot of power off the bike. I didn't put the tail bag on the back like I said. I actually zip tied it up onto the handlebar. It's a little more convenient. As far as the speedometer goes, I just use my phone with a GPS app and it just clicks into here with a quad lock. It's that simple. Before I balance these wheels, I'd go down the road and those rim locks were causing the wheels to just go like wah, 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 wah. The mirror would f shake all over the place. But uh, now that they're balanced, it goes down the road super smooth. The tires are loud. They'll listen to it. I got the clutch pulled in. But yeah, this cruises, especially with this uh, smaller tooth sprocket on the back, cruises down the road a lot better. But I mean, like I said, it's not really made for just driving around on the street. It's more for just going like trail to trail legally, you know. This is why I did what I did to this bike because it just makes getting to trails really super easy and nice. Hopefully it's not all muddy down through here. It's usually pretty muddy through this section. Once you get through here though, you can pretty much go all kinds of places. You can get on railroad beds, abandoned railroad beds that are all nice and smooth. But I'm not going to be doing too much today because I don't have a chest protector on. Yeah, re-gearing this hasn't adversely affected this at all. You guys can see I'm trying not to get too too muddy. I just don't want to spend the rest of the day cleaning the bike up and stuff. So I'm uh, sitting down on my seat because uh, I probably won't share this anywhere else. But I'm, uh, back in 2012, I had an ACL surgery. I totally tore my ACL off and I had a, a cadaver tendon put back in it. Now, was like I say, that was in 2012. Well, that that surgery's failed. My ACL's torn again. And, uh, oh, jeez, I'm... Oh! <clears throat> so that surgery's failed. And uh, now I have a bilateral tear on my meniscus also. So... They're going to go in, take out my old cadaver tendon, get rid of that, and put in a new one. So I'm going to be laid up for a while. So maybe I can do more videos on this channel. Won't be much riding going on, but uh, I definitely probably won't be doing a whole lot over on my welding channel. But the real downer about all this is that the first time I had my surgery, 
I was a week out and uh, I was just in like excruciating pain. I went back to my doctor and uh, I didn't have any classic symptoms of infection so they just basically sent me home and sent me back to PT. And I was having a struggle and to get through PT I couldn't do anything. I wasn't able to do any of the exercises, nothing. And uh, so what happened was is they ended up uh, culturing the fluid on my knee using like a needle into my knee and uh, come to find out it had uh, gone, not only was it infected, it had gone systemic. So uh, I was actually hospitalized for a week. It was probably one of the worst times of my life uh, just because I was, you know, a healthy person and now I'm, you know, laying in the hospital bed with a systemic infection. I had a uh, heart catheter, so I had a, a tube that went out my bicep and fished all the way down into my heart, into the main arteries in my heart. And uh, every morning I would have to go to an IV infusion clinic and uh, have IV antibiotics that turned all my fluids uh, like neon orange. So it was a rough recovery. I was almost a year before I could um, walk again. So I'm not really looking forward to this surgery just from my bad experiences from my other one. But um, yeah, August is when I'm supposed to go out on surgery. They're gonna they're gonna do it all. The good thing is is that. Um, I don't need a bone graft. So that was going to be one of the things that they were going to consider having to do because of the first surgery. So they went in the first time, obviously, did the operation, replaced my ACL. They opened me up a second time. I had a second surgery. That was to hopefully clean out all the infection, which they were able to get it, all the infection out. And so this will be my third operation on that knee and if I had needed a bone graft there would have been four operations so I'm just very blessed that I don't have to to go through that because it was pretty brutal so I'm sure that this surgery isn't going to be overly easy either but you know especially at my age but I asked the doctor you know is this necessary and he said you know if you want to continue to have an active lifestyle then, uh, yeah, it's it's necessary. Let me show you uh, what my first one looks like. Hold on. Check this out. So that's my knee from the first surgery that I had. It's got some buttons up in here. They're called buttons. And look at the length of that screw. It's almost through the other side of my leg. I can actually feel that screw in my skin when I when I touch my knee. So they're taking all that out. And they're just going to do a bunch of buttons. And they're going to, I think, sew my meniscus back together. And, uh, yeah. But pretty gross, huh, guys? Isn't that nasty? So I'll probably be on crutches for like four months and uh, I should be like running again maybe in like six months. So Look how bright my lights are guys. Can you see my headlights reflection? in the uh in the car in front of me how bright they are and that's just the uh the daytime running lights that i showed you guys all right guys so that is it super fun bike you can see again how bright these lights are just gotta make sure i turn them off so i don't end up killing my battery so yeah this bike is a blast on a trail and on the street and i don't really contribute you know those couple times of stalling that you saw you know to the to the new sprocket i think it's just you know not paying attention and talking and just not being cognizant of uh you know my clutch grab or wherever the grab is on it super fun bike guys and you can do this for relatively cheap just make sure you check your local uh state ordinances and stuff to make sure that uh, you know what you do 
is legal because you don't want to get into this project and find out that you can't do it. The first thing that I did is I registered it before I even bought any of the street kit. I made sure at least that I could get a registration for it. So once I had the registration for it in the mail, then I just went out and bought the kit so that I could, you know, physically get it legally on the road. So till the next one, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you soon. I'll probably be doing more of these wrenching type videos and working on stuff because I'm going to be laid up for a bit. Thanks, guys. See ya.